Like this, like this, like this. Wow, that's pretty cool. You can actually delete some of these if you like. It'll have a totally different vibe than if you have all of the shards in there. Now, the last thing I would do if you are keen to it. Before we get started, I'm excited to announce that this lesson will be up on our website, including the class notes, as well as things like the image that I used, all for free. It's for you to reference, so make sure you check that out. We're in the process of reworking the website right now, so give it a bit of time, but all of the previous classes all of the notes should be on there shortly. So let's get started. Okay, so for today's lesson, we're starting off in Illustrator. So make sure you have your Illustrator open. We're gonna create a new file and we're gonna do something a little bit different here. So I'm switching it to inches. I'm actually gonna have two different artboards. We don't really need any of the bleeds, but I'm gonna make my eight and a half by 11 letter size sheets. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create that. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to my artboard tool and then just drag them together. We're trying to mimic what it will look like if we were doing a layout on a page. So we're gonna start by going into the rectangle tool and then I'm just gonna drag out a couple of rectangles or really two rectangles. The size of it doesn't matter, but what is important is we want to see the fill. So we want to see actually exactly how big it is. We don't really need any outlines for this, so I'm switching off the outline. Uh, and then I'm gonna copy this guy down maybe to like half the page, something like that. So now we have two bars. What we're going to do with these two bars is we're going to select both of them, go into object, and we're going to go down to blend and then blend options. So make sure that we actually have this on the specific step category. And then I like to do something, maybe we'll do something like a 12 or 12 to 15. It really depends on you. I'm gonna go with the 14. Uh, and then we're gonna go into object, blend, make. So you can see it's basically blended my object. Now, the thing that's really important here in order to make this successful is we don't want too much space in between these two. So you can see here, this is pretty good. Uh, if you do have too much space, an easy way to correct it is if you double click into this blended shape. And if you just click the bottom or the top, maybe you have to do both uh, and adjust this, you can see that the spacing will also change. So uh, I like mine the way it is, so I'm gonna keep it. So I'm gonna press escape to just exit out of that. All right, now that we have this guy nice and blended, we're going to go and distort this thing. Make sure you have this shape selected first before you go into object. We're gonna go down to envelope distort and we're gonna make with mesh. It's going to pull up this bar or this selection right here. And I've tested a couple of these guys out and five by five actually does seem to work the best for this type of, uh, this type of line work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click okay. Now what it basically did is it's going to calculate the entirety of all of our blended shapes and it's gonna put it, it's gonna put basically control points that is dotted along each point. And we can distort that however we like. So to distort this, we're actually gonna go over to the warp tool. Now you might not see it because it's on the width tool. All you have to do is right click and then go into warp. Now we're actually going to double click on warp so that it pulls up the warp tool options. And it's important that you guys choose a width and height that is fairly big. If it's smaller, it's gonna take a lot more effort to get the effect that we want. So you really want something that is quite large. So here you can see that I have it on 13.8, actually the largest it'll let me go. I also turned intensity up to 100 and kind of just left everything else as the default. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click okay here. So there's a little bit of a trick to how you wanna do this and I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do to create the shape that we're creating. So I'm going back into my distort tool and I'm pulling up on the left side like this and I'm pulling down on the other side. Uh, now make sure that you guys are not, absolutely not making too many of these pulls because the more pull that you make, the more unnatural it's going to look. So. Make sure that you guys are just making minute adjustments. You're not doing huge moves that are going in opposite directions and just adjust this until you find one that generally looks good. 
Hey, I know it's back to school, so I'm here to remind you guys that if you don't have your Adobe subscriptions, I have an affiliate link down in the description and it'll really help the channel if you guys get it from there, if you're gonna get it anyways. And if you're a student, make sure you click on the student link. You'll save like 65% and it's way better than paying full price all the time. So make sure you get that in the affiliate link and support the channel and I really appreciate you guys. Okay, so now we're moving over to InDesign and we're creating our documents in inches. Just a standard eight and a half by 11 uh, with portrait orientation, facing pages checked with two pages and we're gonna start on page number two. Now for this one, I have six point, uh, sorry, 0 0.625 inches for my margin and a nice healthy 0 0.125 if we want to print it out, full bleed. Go ahead and create it. Okay, great. This is the important step. We're gonna go back into our Illustrator. We're going to select this vector object that we created just copy it. So control copy on window. And then I'm going over here and then control paste or you can right click and paste. And there you go. You can see that it's going to come in uh, exactly like how we see it in Illustrator. And if you don't like the way it looks, we can always actually adjust the size of this guy in InDesign. So that's super cool. And you know, we can play around with that if we like. So the next step really is to plug in an image. Okay, now we can see that when this shape comes in, it's in a group. So you can see this group line over here, which is the blue dotted line. Uh, if we try to drag any image into this guy, it's not going to do what we want. Uh, it's just gonna populate a single one of these shards, as I would call it. Uh, it's not gonna do the whole thing. So what we have to do actually is ungroup everything. And then while everything is still selected, we can go in to object go all the way down to path and then make compound path. And we've done this in several different tutorials, but what that's gonna do is just combine everything so it's one single frame. Now, if you drag that image in again, you can see that it's gonna come in as one single image on the page itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fit it. And what I did was basically right click fitting and I did a fit frame proportionally. And so it's gonna occupy everything that's going on on the page. Now I can basically move this guy around however I like. Now a cool variation that you guys can do on this particular layout is before we make everything into a compound mask, you can actually delete some of these if you like uh, to just give it a little bit of a flare and then make the compound path again. Uh, and then if you put in the image, it'll have a totally different vibe than if you have all of the shards in there. So just a little bit of a flair that you can put, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just leave everything in. Okay, so I'm actually gonna move this image around uh, until I like where the tower is sitting in approximation to everything else on the page. I think it really needs to be somewhere in the middle of the right side of the page there. So that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so we're also going to invest in a nice uh, inner shadow for this guy. So. If you go into the effects panel, and if you don't have this guys, it's in windows and you just have to switch on this effects tab. Uh, this window will pop out and all you have to do is click on this guy and then we're gonna give it a inner shadow. So you can see that it's already got a nice effect to it. I'm gonna adjust it so the distance is a little bit less. We don't want it super prominent. Uh, and then we'll also adjust the opacity down to maybe something like a 50. So that already looks pretty good. and. The last thing I'm gonna do on this guy is, it, the left is bothering me just a tiny bit just because of how many dark spots there are. So I'm going over here to the gradient feather tool. I'm gonna select my image first, gradient feather tool, and I'm just gonna feather this guy out. So don't really want all of the left side, so we're going to feather this guy out just a tiny bit. And then all you have to do is populate it with text wherever you want. Bada bing, bada boom, and voila, you just have your text in here and it's already looking like a great layout. Now the last thing I would do if you are keen to it is just give it a nice text wrap. So I'm selecting the image itself, I'm opening the text wrap and just make it wrap around the object shape. You can see that my text down here is going to wrap nice and tug against the image. But also my title, it's gonna shift a little bit, which is great. It just makes everything a lot more engaging on the page. And that's it, that's all I have to teach you guys today. Uh, we recently did a Instagram post about our favorite fonts. So we'd love to know you guys' favorite font as well. So leave that down in the comment below. But with that said, please don't hesitate to leave a like, share, subscribe, and also tell me anything that you learned that was super new and what you would like to learn next. But with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.